So this is my Buck 81. I love this stove. This is the best stove that's ever been in my life. So uh, anyways, it has a nice, nice big, uh, I don't know what you call it, combustion chamber. <laughs> it's got, a, it's really big. It'll hold uh, 19, maybe 20 inch uh, logs. You put them in there lengthways and they burn like a cigar from front to back. I mean, you know, it, now it's good and hot. It's burning all over the place, but the airflow comes in the front and um, we have a really nice, good bed of coals. Look how high that is. That's, that's a really good bed of coals. And this is the key to running these stoves or any stove is a good bed of coals. And if you're new to starting out or new or just starting out with a uh, wood burning um, and you, you're like, ah, it's not lasting throughout the night. It goes out on me and blah, blah, blah. Bed of coals, right? So it takes a full day, maybe more to get a good bed of coals like that. Um, it just doesn't form unless it, it, a lot of time, a lot of pieces of wood have been put in there over and over again and they burn down and burn down and then they insulate each other and so anyways it's a big strong bed of coals and then at night you pack it as full as you can possibly pack it and then i shut it down depending on the weather how cold it is and stuff all right right here's um the readouts probably can't see much but uh oh there we go we got some light now This is all the way open, medium high. That right there would be if it's really cold and I'm gonna actually have to wake up in the middle of the night and put some more on it. But medium low right there, as long as it's fully packed up and really, really nice, then what you're gonna get is a uh, you, what you're going to get is a nice long burn all night long all night see the little poofs of smoke coming out those holes that's your secondary burn what it is is so hot inside there that um the oxygen that's coming out is feeding the gases with more oxygen and they're igniting and burning off so the what would normally be smoke coming off of this fire is actually going up to the top and then whenever you introduce more oxygen it ignites those gases and those gases are burning off even further and so that whenever you go outside which let's go outside and take a look should be a real nice clean smoke Oh, I gotta get way back here. Yeah, you can't even see anything coming out. There's nothing. You can't see anything coming out. So that's what that secondary burn does for you. And this stove, this 81, it's a buck 81. This thing does not have a catalyst. Catalyst stoves really suck. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, they're also good in some ways. Uh, oh, before I forget about this, let me uh, talk about the uh, uh, the blower. So another thing, this living room that we got, this is right at 1,200 square feet, and so we need to get the air out moving. We need to get that heat. So it has. You're gonna hear it pick up. It's got a really nice, really strong blower. Really strong blower. And the, let me show you this too. This, it's, it's air. It is extremely responsive to this air. Watch this.
I can literally feel a difference. Close it off. Open it up. So, it's not coming off on camera the way that I would like it to, but that's okay. So, the catalyst. That thing does not have a catalyst. A catalyst employs a third stage of burning, right? Now, this third stage of burning, there's a lot of people that would say various different things about it, I'm sure. But, get this one going so that we can see some stuff. So that third stage of burning, while yes, I suppose it is good for the environment because it's cleaner smoke, that third stage of burn, burning has been, <clears throat> has been my experience that it actually takes heat to make that happen. Uh, and so it's kind of like it's robbing you of that heat. So, yeah, I don't like the catalysts. They don't make your wood burn longer. They don't give you more heat. Uh, they don't do anything but make the, the, the smoke cleaner. And that's a good thing, right? But whenever it comes at the cost of a stove being able to burn properly, I don't like it. And it very much does in the two stoves that I've had that actually have the catalyst. So this one right here is one of them. This is my hearthstone. We keep this in the hallway and it is our secondary power source. Um, it, I think it's extremely lacking, right? But that's fine because it's our secondary stove. It, it can be lacking. But everything that is said about with the marketing hoo-ha about this stove, I personally think is, <laughs> Louie, get on. Go on now, get, get out of here. Hey, go, get, get. I don't buy it. They say that this thing will burn for up to 20 hours, I believe is what they say. And, and it's just total BS. It, it won't do it. I've loaded it up with all kinds of different woods. Um, there you go, buddy. All kinds of different types of wood. But I will say that I haven't put like um, Timber Slasher, you were saying um, some Locust, I believe you were saying. A real good dense wood and it'll burn longer. Well, I'm certain that it will, absolutely. That's the way things work. But <clears throat> I have loaded it up with white oak. I, and it still, it, I, it barely lasts through the night. So 9 a.m. till, I'm sorry, 9 p.m. till 6 or 7 a.m. So 10 hours. 10 hours, you come back in and you've got a somewhat reasonable amount of coals. You can pick it up and get, a, get another fire started off of those. Uh, but that's from... Number one, you have to have a good bed of coals for that to happen. Um, and, of course, you have to pack it completely tight all the way. It won't really burn through the night. And that's shutting it all the way down, which is another thing that's really funky. Um, you can shut this thing all the way down, and it'll still pick up heat uh, as if you had it turned on medium. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, that's it's like what wait a minute if I turn that buck all the way down I can actually I can actually turn the fire out this thing right here it, if you've got a good fire going and you shut it all the way down it's as if you've shut it down to medium which is that's fooey if I turn then I throw that thing all the way over I should be able to just suck it dry of all the air and and it just slowly goes out you know 
but it doesn't do that and that's part of why it burns burns up all the wood it does not last for 20 hours because it's like no matter what I do I can't choke it down enough but the buck I can choke it all the way down and I've had that thing hold fire um, until 1 o'clock the next day and now and that's not holding fire that's holding embers enough to actually get another fire going I had to use some kindling and things like that but we're talking that's uh, 12, 15, 16 hours, 16 hours, and, and it would still hold a hold a fire or, or at least hold heat enough to where I could throw on some more wood and get it going again, right? Rouse it back up. So, anyways, there you have it. Finally, I got a decent video of these things. This thing does get a really nice really really nice secondary burn going and um then the catalyst is right here let's see what we got all of that air coming out and you can see a little bit louie get the fudge out of here you can see a little bit of the uh well can you yeah way way up top the red hot glowing thing you can see little bits and pieces of it here and there. That is the catalyst. It's kind of like a honeycomb. It works just like the catalyst in your car. And what it does is the heat from the stove is getting it super hot, superheating it, that's what it's called. And then the superheat of that right there is, um, is what's burning off even more of the harmful gases. But it's literally robbing flow from your stove. It do, the air doesn't flow well through it. And it's also, it requires heat to get superheated. And so it's like it's spending part of, you're, you're, I feel like you're losing like 25% of your um, stove's heat producing capability you're losing it to the activation of the catalyst so i don't like it anyways yeah if you got anything from this video what you should have gotten is that we love our buck 81. it is a fantastic stove and remember, if you're new to this starting out, just starting out and building fires, it took me a, a little while to learn it, you know, but because nobody told me. I grew up in Kentucky and we used wood and coal and everything like that, but it was simply a matter of my dad going, put wood in the fire. And that's really, that's all, I, that, that was the takeaway. So, you know, two full decades later, I'm actually burning for wood for the first time kind of thing. It's been about four years now. And so I had to learn it all. And uh, the number one thing that I can teach you or, or say I want to give to you is that these things, to function the way that they should, you want a good, nice bed of coals. If you're going, man, it's really not putting out as much heat as I think it should. Well, wait, the more wood you put in there, you keep putting it in, keep putting it in. As it burns down, put more in. It burns down, put more in. And you'll get that nice bed of coals. And whenever you got that, it's burning so clean. Let me turn this fan off, let that stop so the fan doesn't do anything. It's burning so clean that literally, we sit here and you can leave that door open and it's like a fireplace. All of that smoke, it's making its way up. It goes around those towards the front, around that little flat surface, and out the chimney. It's got enough draw to where it can still, it draws all of the heat out the chimney, no problem. None of it's escaping the door. So, that's a proper fire right there.
I love it. And you'll probably never find a set of fire tools better than these right here. You might find something you like better, but the quality of these is amazing. And where you get these is you figure out how to fabricate a little bit and you make them yourself. Got a nice full 36 inch reach before the, the little ones, man, that they sell at the stores and stuff. I mean, we our hands were getting burned. We were so close to the fire. So that nice reach is great. And then the shovel, check that out. That really holds a load of ash. Excellent shovel. I made all these myself. We got the little hook too. Because, you know, we thought we needed it, like an actual poker or whatever, but uh, we never use it. That right there on the end, that's solid steel. Uh, I think it's like three eighths of an inch and it's shoved inside a half inch steel tubing, which is also inside like a three quarter square tubing with an eyelet on there to hang them up. So, yep. I guess there you have it. I know that this has been like kind of sort of back to back videos about the stoves, but we've got good cold weather. And I've had people ask about it and want to see it and everything. And so I finally got the chance to do that. And <clears throat> there you have it. Our stove set up. The hearthsto hearthstone is like, eh. Meh. The Buck 81. Magical. Lily boy, do you like it? Tell him you like it. <laughs> so it's really cold here in Atlanta. For us. I think right now it's probably about 13 degrees out. Something like that. I think it's supposed to get down to like 8 or something, whatever. Um, we had uh, the water pump failed on us. <clears throat> I don't know if it's frozen. Ooh, there we go. I'm not sure if it's just frozen and not acting right or what, but the uh, pressure regulator is um, on the fritz. It's not wanting to consistently come on whenever it's needed and turn off whenever it's not needed. Uh, I went out there and messed with it. I can turn it on and off manually, but yeah, uh, it, I went ahead and went to tractor supply and I've got, I've got heat tape wrapped around it but I guess maybe that wasn't enough. So I bought a uh, heat lamp as well. So I got the heat lamp shining right on that regulator. Uh, I, pressure switch is what it is. Um, so I, I, got a, I got the heat lamp pouring on that and maybe it'll thaw out and start working right again. Uh, if not, I went ahead and bought another pressure switch, which I'm unhappy about because, well, you know, it's the day before uh, Christmas Eve and so it's not like I would be able to run and get a good pressure switch I, don't, I mean I don't even know if Home Depot would have a square D pressure switch I'd probably have to get that at Granger or order it online but the one at Tractor Supply is a Tractor Supply brand and I just don't have the best faith the most faith in the Tractor Supply brand a uh, good square D pressure switch would be, I'd be a lot happier with. But, uh, yeah, it's cold outside, but it's warm inside. And uh, me and Irene's just been chilling all day. She had today off. It's her birthday. She is officially an old lady. She's a hag. And 
I am chained to her. It's, it's awful. Just terrible. Terrible. Me and all my youth is spent on her. <laughs> She's almost two full years older than me. So... <laughs> I'm 46. I just turned 46 and she just today turned a little bit older than me. <laughs> a couple years. So, but she still looks fantastic. Hey, say hey, Irene. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Everybody out there wish Irene a happy birthday. But yeah, I haven't been doing much at all. Just chilling. Uh, we put together her um, birthday and Christmas presents. Check, <laughs> look at this. Is that not a lot of bookshelves? <laughs> Lord. So we already had three. These are from Ikea. And let me tell you, I've been trying to explain to her that what Ikea makes is high quality shit. <laughs> they are some of the worst products, but very nice on top of that so anyway she really she's european so she really likes the style and i don't mind it one bit but um yeah she wanted two more of these to really fill up the space we got here and well <laughs> it's really filled up now look at that that's me and my kids whenever whenever they were real little yeah <laughs> and that's my son blake <laughs> look at it real close He's, that's a lollipop. <laughs> so the plan has always been, you know, whenever he gets married to have that, that picture all over the place to make fun of him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, just chilling, uh, enjoying the holidays and, uh, and the, you know, time with Irene at home and just relaxing. I don't want to act like I like cold weather because I don't. I kind of despise it. But we get it so rarely here in Atlanta. Whenever it does come, it's enjoyable to just get a nice fire going, get it really good and, really good and warm, you know? And, uh, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. I have no idea if I'm going to be putting out any videos over this weekend. I don't know. We're just chilling and relaxing. You guys enjoy yours and we'll enjoy ours. Take care.